Right now, for every electric car sold globally, roughly three more are sold with a petrol engine. And that split seems to give traditional cars a commanding lead. But that number is one of the most misleading statistics in the entire auto industry because it hides a seismic shift happening just beneath the surface. It's a story of three completely different worlds. The United States market is definitely lagging, with EV adoption hovering around 9% and even likely to fall during December. Meanwhile, there is a resurgence in the sale of petrol and hybrids. But it is only the third largest market behind Europe and China. The EU, in contrast, is ramping up its EV adoption at an ever-increasing pace, and the November EV sales figures are simply amazing. Tesla's been knocked completely out of the top 10, not by cheap Chinese EVs, but by European manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes and VW. Europe is now 35% EVs and accelerating. But China's in a league all of its own, having blown past every projection and has just crossed a staggering 50% market share for new energy vehicles. That's just a fact. Half of all new cars sold in the world's largest auto market are now electric. This explosive, unprecedented adoption rate changes everything. In this video, we're going to cut through the confusing headlines and the political noise. We will analyse this great automotive divide to pinpoint the exact year the global tipping point will be reached, the year your next car will almost certainly be electric. This is Dave Takes It On, and I'm Dave. On the surface, the global picture looks like a slow, steady transition. In 2025, about one in every four new passenger cars sold worldwide will be an EV. That does include both fully battery electric vehicles, BEVs, and plug-in hybrids, often called PHEVs. To go from less than 5% of the market just a few years ago to over 25% today is, by any historical measure, an industrial revolution on fast-forward. There are now well over 50 million EVs on roads around the world, a number projected to keep climbing dramatically. But this impressive global average masks a fractured reality. The world is not moving in unison. Instead, we're seeing a dramatic split where a few key markets are sprinting into the electric future, while others are, well, still waiting for the starting gun. Europe is making steady progress, with EV market share hitting around 35% in many areas, driven by strict emissions regulations. And emerging markets in Southeast Asia and Latin America are starting to leapfrog, with countries like Vietnam and Thailand seeing EV sales shares that now rival or even surpass those in Europe. However, the entire global transition, the very speed at which petrol cars will become a relic of the past, hinges on the tail of two giants, as China and the United States. Difference between them couldn't be more, more stark. Understanding their unique paths is the only way to find the real answer to when the worldwide takeover will happen. To say China is dominating the EV race is an understatement. China is the EV race. In 2025, sales of new energy vehicles, which includes the BVs and PHEVs, have officially crossed the 50% threshold in the first half of the year, meaning they are now outselling traditional petrol cars. For the world's largest car market to hit this tipping point a full decade ahead of their predictions is nothing short of revolutionary. So how did this happen? And it wasn't an accident. It was the result of a deliberate multi-decade industrial strategy. First, the Chinese government poured massive support into the sector. Estimates suggest this aid reached over $230 billion between 2009 and 2024, making EVs more affordable for everyday citizens. And this support was combined with tax exemptions and mandates that forced manufacturers to produce a certain percentage of EVs in some cities, getting a license plate for a petrol car could cost a fortune, while an EV plate was free. It forced them to stop making ICE cars. Well, this created a fiercely competitive domestic market, giving rise to local champions like BYD. 
while many in the West are still focused on Tesla, BYD has become a global behemoth. Supported by this government fueled demand, Chinese companies mastered the entire supply chain, especially battery production. They focus relentlessly on bringing down costs, particularly with the development of cheaper LFP batteries. The result? Well, in China, a huge proportion of EVs are now cheaper to buy than their petrol counterparts. Price parity isn't a future goal, it's a present reality. With a saturated and hyper-competitive market, these Chinese giants are now looking outwards. They're exporting millions of affordable, high-quality EVs, filling product gaps not only in Europe, but in the rapidly expanding new market, Southeast Asia, Latin America. In essence, China built its own EV ecosystem, achieved critical mass, and is now pulling the rest of the world along with it. Well, now let's tr cross over to the United States, where the story is completely different. In 2025, US market share for the new EVs hovering around a disappointing 9% has even dipped lower already in some quarters. This isn't a complete failure, but it's a significant lag compared to the global pace and a world away from China's reality. In fact, for the first time, analysts have had to reduce a long-term forecast for EV adoption in the US, citing a number of uniquely American roadblocks. The primary obstacle is cost and policy seesaw. While EV prices are falling, the average transaction price remains high for many buyers. This is made worse by a shifting political landscape. Federal tax credits, key incentive, expired at the end of September 2025, creating a sales cliff and significant uncertainty for consumers. The rollback of federal fuel economy standards has also chilled the market, driving many back to petrol. Well, this environment has led to a fascinating trend, the rise of the hybrid. For many American consumers, hybrids have become the preferred stepping stone, offering better fuel economy without the commitment and the perceived risks of going fully electric. Then there are the classic concerns, range anxiety and charging infrastructure. While most daily driving is easily covered by today's EVs, the fear of being stranded on a long road trip remains a powerful psychological barrier. A long road trip is definitely a thing in the US. Currently, the US has far fewer public charges per EV than Europe or China, especially fast, reliable charges along highways, which only reinforces this anxiety. Tesla still dominates the US EV market, but its share is shrinking as other automakers slowly ramp up production. However, unlike in China, where dozens of brands compete on affordable models, the American market has been slower to introduce budget-friendly options, further slowing mass adoption. The US is not stalling, but it's clearly in a lower gear. Now, it's clear that where you are in the world dramatically changes your perception of the EV transition. It's a sprint in some reg regions and a marathon in others. Now, if you're getting value from this breakdown and want to stay ahead of the curve on the bigger shifts in tech and transport, take a second, please, to subscribe to the channel. So we have a world being pulled in three directions, a slowing, hesitant, maybe even falling US market, an accelerating Europe and an utterly dominant Chinese market that's now exporting its revolution globally. How do we resolve these opposing forces to find our global tipping point? Well, the answer comes down to sheer market gravity. China's car market is so massive that its momentum is becoming the world's momentum. China alone accounts for nearly two thirds of all global EV sales. The country sells more EVs in a single year than the entire US car market of all types combined. Even with a slowdown in the US, the global growth rate remains explosive, driven by China and the wave of affordable Chinese EVs now landing in emerging markets. Three key factors will push the world over the edge. First, battery costs continue to fall. Overcapacity in China's battery plants is driving down prices, making EVs cheaper for everyone. This is the single most important factor for reaching price parity with petrol cars. Now, second is the rise of the vastly improved LFP batteries and the introduction of the solid state batteries. 
the latest generation of silicon carbide, sodium and LFP batteries offer energy densities now approaching that of the original NMC batteries, but at a fraction of the cost, while solid state, still in early stages, are being commercialised and are expected to enter the market soon, promising even greater energy density and faster charging. This will help eliminate the final arguments about range and convenience. And third, the build-out of infrastructure is reaching a critical mass. While the US definitely lags, elsewhere global investment in public EV charging is immense. When you put all the pieces together, the trajectory becomes clear. The slowdown in the US may delay the global tipping point by a year, maybe two, but it cannot stop it. Forecasts from leading analysts like Bloomberg NEF project that the global share of electric cars, cars in new sales could hit 50% as early as 2030. Others, yeah, a bit more conservative, their models point towards nearer 2035. Well, considering the massive acceleration in emerging, uh, emerging markets and the continued dominance of China, the 50% crossover point for new car sales is imminent. Based on the current supercharged trajectory led by China, the global auto market will pass that 50% mark and officially enter the electric area era in the early 2030s. The most data-driven prediction points to the year 2032, but so many past predictions have been wildly pessimistic. By then, more new electric cars will be sold worldwide than new internal combustion engine cars. The war will be over. Petrol cars will have lost. After that, it only leaves a rapid decline before the final collapse. That statistic we started with, that for every one EV, three gas cars are sold, that already feels a bit dated, doesn't it? It's a snapshot of a world in transition, but it doesn't show the incredible velocity of that change. The story of the EV takeover is no longer a global monolith. It's a story of China's market gravity pulling the rest of the world into an electric future, even as markets like the US hit the brakes. By 2030, that debate will at last be over. The infrastructure will be widespread, the cost will be competitive, technology will be far superior. Your next car, or the one after that, will almost certainly be electric. The only question left is, are you ready? Well, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm Dave.